What's good YouTube? In this video, we'll be taking a look at the best iPhone camera settings to maximize and improve your image and video quality. If you like this kind of content or find this kind of content to be helpful, leave a message down below, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. So computational photography has come a long way on the iPhones and the iPhone is packed with features and settings that allow it to be used in multiple applications. Some of these settings though are optimized for efficiency or scenarios where image quality or video quality isn't the priority. This video will take a look at which settings you want to toggle in order to maximize image and photo quality. If you're looking to save space or if you're looking to quickly take photos, then you might not want to look at the specific settings discussed here. As this video is looking to maximize the quality that you can get from your captures on photo and video for your iPhone. So to get things started, we'll show you how to actually access these settings. What you want to do is to go into your settings app and scroll down until you see camera. From here, go into the camera settings and the first setting we're going to take a look at is of course formats. Here you'll find two formats for your photos, high efficiency and most compatible. High efficiency is HEVC, which is used primarily by Apple. This format is geared towards maximizing storage space on your iPhone. And while the photo quality that you get from this format isn't bad, if your goal is to maximize the quality of your captures, then you want to switch this to most compatible, which of course is the JPEG format. JPEG will allow you to easily send the photos that you take on your iPhone to other people that don't use iPhones like Android devices. And it's Aside from making it easier for you to share your photos, it also increases the overall quality. Next up, we'll take a look at the record video. If you go into record video, you'll notice that there's several settings to adjust the quality of the video and also the frame rate. Once you get past 1080p, it's really a matter of taste of what kind of look you're going for. Of course, if your iPhone can support it, 4K will have greater pixels and a higher quality than 1080p. In terms of frames per second, it really depends on what kind of look you're going for. If you're going for a more realistic look, then you might want to go with 30 frames per second. 24 frames per second will give you a little bit more of a cinematic look. And of course, 60 frames per second will give you that smooth motion look. Scrolling down, if your iPhone can support it, you can toggle HDR video, which is of course high dynamic range video on your iPhone. If you're shooting in environments with high dynamic range where there's a lot of really high contrast, then this might be an option you're looking for. HDR video is still in its early stages in an iPhone. And while the presentation here is great, I would still prefer to have this off as if I'm truly trying to shoot in high dynamic range, the software and hardware isn't exactly there yet. For most everyday video shooting, if you just want to maximize quality, I would leave HDR video off, but that's just my own personal preference. Going back to the camera settings, the next features that I want to take a look at is grid. Grid, of course, are the lines that show up on your iPhone screen that allow you to better compose your images using the rule of thirds. Given all the angles and unique scenarios where you can film and take photos of the iPhone, it's quite easy to lose sight of the rule of thirds when you're in the middle of taking a shot. So I like to have this on just because it helps me compose images a lot better. And moving down a little bit in the camera settings, we have lens correction. Lens correction is where the, the iPhone uses its software to correct the lens distortion of the front and ultra wide cameras. I like to have this on, but if you're looking for that distorted lens look, then you might want to turn this off. Moving on, we'll go into the actual camera app. So if you load up the camera app, there's a few settings which you might want to toggle and optimize for the best image quality this flash at the top left of the screen. I generally like to have flash turned off as flash on smartphones isn't the same thing as flash on full size photography and video. It's generally quite small and unless you're really close to what you're shooting, the image quality with flash turned on isn't the greatest. So I like to have this feature off. Next up, we have live at the top right of the screen. Live, of course, is when the iPhone takes several captures before and after you press the shutter button to allow you to capture the perfect moment. 
I like to have this on as sometimes the perfect shot is right before or after you press the shutter button. Moving down a bit, we have the aspect ratio of the screen, which is just above the shutter button on your iPhone. You can choose from square, which is 1 to 1, 4 thirds, and 16 by 9. By default, I like to have this up by 16 by 9, which is the most common way of shooting photos. Next up, we have photo and or portrait mode. Portrait mode, of course, is where the iPhone uses software to naturally blur out the background of the image. And while portrait mode has come a long way over the years, I still would prefer the natural bokeh of a full-size camera lens. So I generally myself don't shoot in portrait mode. That's not to say though that the results that you can get from portrait mode on the iPhone are not great. Actually, you can adjust the amount of background blur when you're in portrait mode as there's a slider that comes up on your iPhone screen that allows you to adjust the blurriness. So if you're in a pinch and you don't have a full size camera on you and you just need to absolutely blur out the background, you can rely on portrait mode on the iPhone to do this. It's quite good. The next settings that we'll be looking at are the filters in photo mode. So if you tap on the filters button on the options menu in your camera, you'll be able to scroll through the various filters which include vivid, vivid warm, vivid cool and dramatic among others. In general, I like to stay away from filters on the iPhone as if I'm really looking to maximize my image quality, I will adjust the colors in post-production on the captures from my iPhone. So in general, I like to have this turned off. Next of course is the timer. The timer is really useful when you're looking to do other things prior to pressing the shutter button, like arranging the scene. So if there's certain things like holding up lighting elements that you need to do prior to taking the shot, you might want to set the timer accordingly as it's a great and convenient way to take a shot ahead of time prior to pressing the shutter button. Of course, the best use of the timer and the most common use of the timer is you want when you want to get yourself in the shot. So if you're looking to take portraits of yourself or have yourself in group shots with other people as well, the timer is a great option to improve that. So there you have it everyone, just several options that I like to have toggled on my iPhone to maximize image quality. The iPhone has come such a long way in such a short period of time in terms of both improving photo and video quality. And while in my opinion the HDR photo and video isn't up to par with having a full size DSLR with you or mirrorless camera with you at this time, it sure is catching up and other features like the excellent portrait mode are providing non-photographers a great way of easily and quickly capturing high quality photo and video. So what do you think? Are there any other settings that can be adjusted on the iPhone to maximize photo and video quality? Leave a message down below. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.